In this tutorial, I'll showcase how to use the Phenotype Maker in order to make targets that match a particular pattern of interest or perhaps a particular animal phenotype that you're interested in. And then I will show you how to make custom starting populations where the starting individuals or the entire exploration space is limited around the pre-built target type. First of all, I'm going to open up Camo Evo. And then I'm going to go to plugins, one Camo Evo phenotype maker. You will have seen this in action if you've watched the custom shapes tutorial. What you have here is the target tab. This includes all of the targets that have been added to the target settings.txt file. And then you've got the patterns. These are the different pattern generation systems. So for example, if I select the default circle, animal patterns, it will then present you with this menu. So this is the color space. So this allows you to assign a starting color space similar to how you'd assign a starting color space for a population. So for example, if I have a luminance min of zero and luminance max of 100, A range of minus 40 to 40, B range of minus five to 60, and hit okay. It will pull up this color space here. So you have the blue yellow on the Y axis and you have the A, B value on the X axis. What's worth noting with this plot is the A and B value axes um, are inverted. So the top is the lower value and the bottom is the higher value. Uh, I'm not happy with the space. I want a uniform space. So I'm going to go no try again, and I'm just going to set them all color values to 40, 40 range. As you can see, there's now a lot more blue in the space. Uh, this is something I typically avoid doing for camouflage experiments or for experiments based around animal patterns, simply because most animals, uh, barring those that use it for signaling, don't typically use very much blue. If I then go back, phenotype maker, pattern, eggs, keeping the default circle shape, it instead pulls up a different color space. This is the egg color space. We haven't talked too much about the egg pattern generation in these tutorial videos, but it's worth noting. And instead you have the deposition. So this is the amount of pigment. The greater the deposition, the darker the egg. And the pigment ratio. So the ratio of red, brown to blue, green pigment. So this here is the full color space. As you can see, it gets darker towards here. This is more deposition. This is not inverted. Um, this is using the actual um, orientation that you'd expect. And then you've got the uh, pigment ratio. So if I were to narrow the pigment ratio towards the lower values, and if I were to narrow the deposition a tiny bit, you will get lighter eggs, which are more brown, yellow in coloration. We're going to go back to the animal pattern generation. Circle. We're going to keep the color space that it had to begin with. Yes, I'm happy with this color space. It will then give you the option to import a genome. If you choose this option, it allows you to go and select a population that you've already made, uh, which I am actually going to do. And I've got a folder here which contains targets that I've pre-made. So we're going to select the grumpy toad target that I've made. It will then allow you to choose the rows. This is useful if you are importing a genome from a population that you evolved, in which case you want to choose the role in the genes.txt file of the particular individual you're interested in. Or you can try and manually type in all the values, but I don't recommend doing that, as in many cases there are over 30 genes. So this here is the part one menu, and this is all of the gene values of this pre-generated individual. And then if you tap through, it will take you through all of them. And you can edit each of these values. 
and here is the custom target I've made. One of the things you'll notice is this is not in a toad shape, and that is because I did not sh select the toad mask. So this is exactly the same pattern, but without the bilateral symmetry and rendered on a circular target instead of a toad target. It's important for you to use the exact same color space and the exact same target shape that you use to make the pattern if you want to reload it. So it's worth writing down the color space that you used. Um, are you happy with this color space? No, try again. Do I want to randomize? No, not for now. Z, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tweak a few genes. So I'm just going to change the pattern X and the pattern Y positions. And as you can see, the pattern has changed. And this is because I've edited the coordinate on the pattern sheet that it uses. Change the pattern coverage. And as you can see again, the pattern has shifted. So if you want to edit the pattern or edit the phenotype, you can do so by tweaking the individual genes. This is also a useful tool for exploring what the genes do and what impact they have on the phenotype. Now that we've had a play around with editing those genes, we can also generate random individuals. So we go, okay, no try again. Yes, randomize. And as you can see, it's now changing all of the gene values to random values. And I can just cycle through, create a few randomizations until I get one I like. I quite like this one. So what I'm going to do, go yes, let's save this. I'm going to give it a name, Otty Circle. And then what it will do, it will ask me to select a folder for it to download the genome to, or save the genome to. I'm going to put it in this custom targets folder here. So now if I go plugins, camera rec, custom targets, I will see the grumpy toad, the peppered moth, and the spotty circle. And each one has a copy of their genome saved. So one of the things that makes this tool really useful is not only can you use it to test and create custom uh, populate, um, custom phenotypes, you can use it to then um, influence a custom population. So within Camo Evo version 1.21 plus, in addition to the um, starting populations of the uh, Camo egg and Camo toad, I added the peppered moth. And what this features is a restricted um, starting uh, gene range and a restricted phenotype range. And I will show you how to make these files as follows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make custom toad populations. To do that, I'm going to use the grumpy toad. So to do that, I'm going to go plugins, camera rec, custom targets. Here's the grumpy toad. And I'm just going to copy this genome here. I'm going to open up Excel, although you can use a similar file editing software. I'm just going to paste this in here for now. Keep a hold of it. Then I'm going to go to my populations, toad marsh. So what I've done here is I've made a series of populations. Each one has a different background. So this is toad scrub. And this is toad wood. For toad marsh. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the camo toad. Actually, no, I'm, yes, I am going, I'm going to go to the camo toad. Camo toad. I'm going to copy these two text files and replace the ones that are already there. So what these text files are is they set the min and maximum range of the genome 
in which the phenotype is allowed to explore. And then this, the start gene range, changes the starting range of the genes within a population, following the same distribution that it would otherwise. So if it follows a uniform distribution, it will simply scrunch the range down to the set value. So what I'm interested in doing is limiting the range of the phenotypes so that the pattern cannot shift in anything but coverage. The color can be allowed to shift, the edge enhancement can be allowed to shift, and the speckling can be allowed to shift. And I'll show you how to do this. So I'm going to copy this text sheet here, and I'm going to insert it into this Excel file. Now, as with this document, only the first three rows are relevant. You can leave this row here as however you like, and it shouldn't cause any issues. If it does, just clear it out. What I'm gonna do is for the phenotype ranges, I'm going to copy these gene values, but only onto the pattern elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these, everything up to the EEM genes, which are the edge enhancement genes, and I'm just going to copy them there. I'm going to copy them here. So now the min value and the max value is that. But what I will do is make it so that the coverage can vary between 0 to 1. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm just going to copy all of these and paste it onto the phenotype ranges. I am going to delete this just in case. So now everything can occupy the full range of decimal values that encodes the phenotype except for the pattern. In fact, I will make one slight alteration. I'm going to give the pattern a very narrow range. And the reason for doing this is just to allow a little bit of variation in terms of the shape of it, as you do want to have some of that. In fact, I'm going to make it even narrower. There we go. So that's now got a range of 0 0.5. Just going to copy those rows, paste them back in. Sorry, paste them back into the phenotype ranges. Now for the genotype ranges, what I'm going to do is it doesn't really matter what I do with the ones that I've already set to have such limited ranges. I'll just leave those as 0 to 1. But because I like the color that I set for the grumpy toad, or for the toad pattern, I'm going to make it so that the color ranges for the starting population are quite a bit more limited, along with the speckling and edge enhancement ranges. So to do that, what I can do is I can make it so that the min equals the original value minus 0 0.2 and the max equals the original value plus 0 0.2. I'm just going to drag this along. 
And if there are any values that are less than zero, I will place them with zero. And if there are any values that are greater than one, I will replace them with one. Okay, that appears to have worked. And I'm going to copy that onto the genotype, so the start gene ranges. As a note, if you're confused as to what certain genes do, do please reference the user manual as there's a full breakdown of each of the genes. So now if I go to Plugins, one camo evo, camo evo game. Load game, toad marsh. It should now make a new population resembling the original grumpy toad. Now that the targets are ready, we can take a look at them. So this is what we've ended up with. We could probably have done with restricting the coverage range a little bit, or with restricting the color space a little bit more, but overall I'm fairly happy with these. Now, let's say we're interested in the influence of the habitat, the background, on this particular population structure. So this particular range of colorations and patterns. One thing that might be worth doing is comparing exactly the same population. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the Gen 0 genes into the toad scrub and into the toad wood. I'm going to copy the transform phenotype and the transform start genes from the toad marsh into the toad scrub and into the toad wood. This can be useful if you wanted to do a practical demonstrating directional selection. So for example, you could set up a population where certain genes such as color are in a normal distribution around a particular individual. This individual could be one that you've already evolved for that background while well, all of the other genes are locked. You can then have it so that the students attempt to play the game and the ones which they're able to find faster are the ones that are less likely to survive. And if your background is unaltered, you should get stabilizing selection. If your background has been shifted in, say, luminance or color, then you should get directional selection. So. Let's just take a look at what these targets look like against our marsh background. As you can see, there is already, even within this restricted space, some variation in the difficulty of finding particular individuals. And within this, we can simply look at the influence of coloration and less so the influence of pattern shape. However, let's say rather than using the changes to starting genes, we want to make an entirely custom starting population. Well, to do that, simply reset the start gene values so they can all be between 0 and 1. Delete whatever population has already been made, but keep the Gen 0 genes template. We're going to copy this template into Excel. 
And what you can do is you can replace all of these values and you can add in additional individuals, providing that they have their own unique ID tag following this system here. Once you've made whatever range you want, so for example, say I wanted every individual to have 0.5 to start, for every single gene, you can do that, you just copy and save, or you can artificially create your own distributions of the populations. You can either make it so that you have two different color morphs or whatever, and you can save it in. What is important though, is however many individuals you put in, you need to make it so in the algorithm settings, the population size, which is this value here, is set to whatever number you're interested in, and that the setting populations, the number of, um, sorry, the population size is also set to that value. And that concludes the tutorial on how to make uh, custom phenotypes of the phenotype maker and custom populations.